Hi, everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, this is Roberta, and I have the privilege of being the associate publisher of New England Home Connecticut Magazine. And I'd like to welcome everyone to the eighth year in partnership with George Sneed and Wakefield Design Center in Stanford, Connecticut. I have to tell you that because we're virtual. Um, co-hosting to the trade only market day with the help of Beth Dempsey and her team at images and details twice a year we have brought nationally and internationally recognized design icons to our regional market um, and as I said this event is usually held at Wakefield Design Center where we have yummy food and at the end of the day we have wine and champagne and it's a really great networking time but um, in absence of being able to do that, we've broken up what is usually an afternoon into what is going to be three separate sessions. And so this afternoon is the first one and it's called The Marriage of Art and Design. And part two and part three are May 14th and May 21st and you will all be receiving invitations to that. No great event can go off without sponsor support. And I would like to acknowledge each of our sponsoring companies. Now, again, typically at the in-person event, everybody would get a chance to say something, but uh, what we've decided to do is let two of our sponsors sort of be the hosts of each of the three events. <coughs> so our sponsor and companies are Dean Distinctive Design and Cabinetry, l and Custom Carpets and Rugs, The Linen Shop, Digital Home Systems, Heidi Hulser Design and Decorative Work, and Alina's Decorators Workshop. So today's sponsoring companies are l and Custom Carpets and Rugs and Dean Decorative Design and Cabinetry. Now, um, my friend Gary from l and actually was having technical problems and since he can't go anywhere with his computer, I am going to do Gary's commercial for you. So l and Custom Rugs, Carpets and Rugs, um, the tagline is the interior designer source for showroom quality custom carpets and rugs at direct prices. Um, Gary does a lot of uh, beautiful flat weaves. Um, he, he pretty much can get any kind of beautiful custom carpet. He works out of his car. He comes to you. He wanted me to show you that he runs on the back cover of every single issue of New England Home Connecticut, and we'll be doing that for as long as he lives, according to him. So that's a nice testimony. Um, he wants you to know that he's out on the road again. He's doing safe um, meetings. He's bringing his samples. Uh, his meetings are outside. He's been meeting with designers here in Connecticut. Um, he also wants you to know, which is, uh, I think very interesting because I know that we have a lot of people that are are joining us from uh, all of New England and he um, now has a line of carpets at the carpet workroom in Avon and Needham, Massachusetts. So um, that's an expansion of his business and any of you who are not in the Connecticut, New York market can now have access to his beautiful carpets there. And Gary is a super great guy. So um, there you go. So now I'm going to turn this over to um, Veronica from uh, Dean Distinctive Design and Cabinetry. Hi there. Hi, everybody. I am Veronica Campbell, and I'm in our Stanford showroom. We have two showrooms, one here in Stanford, Connecticut, and one in New Canaan. And for those of you who don't know us, we are a third generation family design business. We specialize in kitchens and baths, but so much more, uh, bookshelves, offices, bars. Um, and we enjoy working with our allied professionals. Professionals, You are our partners. And it's when we team up with the designers, builders, and architects, that's when we feel we have the best outcome. So just to tell you quickly a little bit about our services, I think what makes your life easier is that we have a showroom. So you can schedule to bring your clients here we're in this crazy time of COVID, we're happy to do FaceTime and Zoom appointments as well. Um, here, your clients can be inspired by all of our displays. They can touch, feel, and actually see everything that they're getting. We also take care of all the shop drawings and measurements, which is a huge relief and an ease to your job. 
Um, we stand behind all of it. We have field supervision, so we would be happy to work with the contractors, the um, trades, to make sure that the job is executed well. We do all of our own installation, and um, we'll do product sourcing, and we'll work with you to do as much or as little as you'd like. So we're happy to source the countertops, the backsplash, as well as, of course, the, the cabinetry, but we work with you and how you like to work with your client, and um, we can share in those responsibilities. We're happy to do that. Um, what we're finding now is that we're doing a lot of destination projects, as I'm sure you're doing. Uh, right now, we are working, I'm personally working on three projects in Nantucket, which is not easy during this time, um, the Cape and the Cayman Islands. So we go all over, and we have an installer that will take care of that as well. So um, I'd love for, to encourage you to call us or email me at Dean. Um, I'm sure our information will be provided by, uh, to you. I'm Veronica C at deaninc.com. Um, and we'd love to schedule uh, an appointment, whether in person or Zoom or FaceTime. So thanks so much. Thank you very much, Veronica. And um, now I would like to introduce George Sneed, who is the owner of Wakefield Design Center. Uh, with whom we've had a tremendous long-term partnership and um, happy to turn it over to you, George. Thanks, Roberta. <clears throat> um, as she made reference, um, this is our eighth year. It is our first virtual trade day, but we're excited about it for um, a variety of reasons. It's challenging. We'd like to thank Roberta and all of our sponsors and for those of you who don't know us, we are located in Stamford, Connecticut. Uh, we're a 12,000 square foot showroom. And what makes us a little different than everyone else is, and it has nothing to do with our current situation. Everything is for sale off the floor of the day we get it. So we can furnish a whole house if you need it and we're ready to go, um, cash and carry, or we'll deliver to you. Uh, we're eagerly awaiting a return to normal in the meantime, we're here for you by appointment, whether it's Zoom. Um, we can deliver finished samples, fabrics to you. If you want to make an appointment, we're fully disinfected and have everything you need to make sure that you know a, a visit here is safe. Um, I can't believe that the last time I saw Laurie and Lisa was at Maison Objet in Paris. Um, that seems like light years ago, but we had so much fun and I, really enjoyed um, the collection, the collaboration, getting to know each of you better. So thank you so much. Um, I can't wait to see everybody in person once we open. We actually had a designer who came in the other day to pick up a finished sample and actually cried because she was so happy to be surrounded by the things that she loves to work with. Um, so I'll see you at the end of the presentation. Right now I'd like to turn the meeting over or turn the Zoom over to um, Clint Smith, the editor-in-large, uh, New England Home Magazine, and um, bye for now. Thank you, George. Once this is over, I've got to get that pink, the name of that pink color behind you. That's, that's a good color. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. I hope everyone is safe, well, and um, happy wherever this finds you. I'm at my home in Bedford, New York, not too far from George in the Wakefield Design Center. Um, and I look forward to being able to go back over there once um, we get the all clear. Um, I'm thrilled to be here today with our two panelists, Lori Weitzner and Lisa Hunt. They are two powerhouse creatives from the worlds of art and interior design, mm -hmm. who recently joined forces to collaborate on a new fabric and wallpaper collection that's really, really special. I think you'll find it to be a breath of fresh air. They've created a great presentation um, to share with us today, and we will get to that as soon as I do two quick introductions. Lori is the principal and creative director of Lori Weitzner Design and is internationally known for her contributions to the world of textiles and wall coverings under the brand Weitzner Limited. She additionally collaborates with eponymous brands creating rugs, passementerie, sewn and tile, bedding, and gifting. Her work is in the permanent collections and museums such as the Cooper Hewitt in New York and the Victoria Albert in London, and she is the recipient of more than 35 prestigious design awards. She recently authored her first book, Ode to Color, The 10 Essential Palettes for Living and Design, published by HarperCollins, and she lectures around the world on the effects of color on our well-being. 
Last year, she stepped outside of the world of interiors to launch her first collection of textile infused jewelry and accessories. Each piece uniquely handmade has allowed Weitzner to help preserve the work of craftsmen for the modern world. Next, Lisa Hunt. After over 20 years of contributing to pu the publishing world's top brands, most notably as the creative director of Essence Magazine, Lisa decided it was time to get back to what makes her happiest, and that is creating art with her own hands. And in 2015, she started her second career as a full-time visual artist. Lisa's screen printed works on paper and canvas explore the spatial and meditative relationships found within repeat patterns. Comprised of graphic shapes, symbols, and reimagined typographic elements, they are expressed with a minimalist approach. Her work employs an aesthetic use of 24 karat gold leaf as a nod to its Ill illuminating and adorning use throughout art history. She's represented by Uprise Art and Stella Ripley Contemporary, and she's been featured in all the best magazines and she's a founding member of the Black Artists and Designers Guild. She lives in Maplewood, New Jersey with her husband, Kyle, and their dog, Sally, where she works from her home-based art studio. So I know you'll join me in giving them a virtual welcome and round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> so Lori and Lisa, can you just, let's start off, how, how did you two first meet? Well, I'll start by saying that I was looking through magazines as I usually do, please let the magazines all survive. And I saw a beautiful story on Lisa. First I saw her picture and I thought, oh, she's beautiful. And then I looked at her work and I thought, oh my God, her work is beautiful. And it was all these giant art pieces where she combined her gold leafing techniques. And what I was most drawn to was it was geometry, but it was geometry in a very um, mm, calming, um, organic way, if I can say that. That sounds contrasting, but, and Weitzner, the company that I have, we don't do geometry all that well, but we need it in the collection. And I thought, oh my God, her work translated into wall coverings and textile could actually be beautiful. So I just reached out to her. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. And so had either of you been looking for collaborative partners or was it really just the two of you meeting that sort of sparked the idea? Um, I'll, 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 I'll start with it. Um, I, I actually, uh, hadn't been, uh, necessarily looking, but I have been approached in the past. Um, but I have to say when I met Lori, I knew that it was, it was the right time and a good fit. Um, wallpaper in particular is something that I had explored on my own, um, as, as, you know, just an idea that maybe I would, um, have a small collection myself that I, that I would, uh, produce and present. Um, and so I had done some exploration with that and I, I've gotten a lot of feedback from designers in particular who've seen my, my, um, my, my work in person. And because I think of the, the, re, the repeat patterns in my work, there was a lot of uh, inquiry about wallpaper. So when Lori came to my studio, she reached out and we had a conversation. It, it, it seemed like the right time and, and the perfect fit. Sorry, I hope that's not distracting, but I wanted to get to some of her artwork. <laughs> <laughs> There's always glitches with this, but these are the kinds of things that I saw. Um, and those beautiful pieces of artwork is what I saw in the magazine. Um, and I went to her studio, which at the time was in Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. And we just, I just was mesmerized and not just with the pieces, but with her process. And um, so that was the beginning. That was the beginning. Those are some big pieces of her work. Yeah. And Lori, can you talk about, have, had you done collaborations in um, the past or in, when you do those, what, what, what are you looking for? You know, um, I haven't done many, I'll be honest, uh, in terms of this kind of thing where it's a guest artist. I had done one before for an outdoor collection for something very painterly and colorful. Again, when I do collaborations, I'm looking for something to fill a void that we at Weitzner don't have and doesn't feel natural for me to do, but yet I know we need it in the collection. Right. So in this example, it was geometry. In this other example, it was very bright, colorful, highly saturated outdoor print fabrics. And, and so with Lisa's, what was so cool about it is that we didn't just want to take it and literally just make it you know, as a wall covering or fabric, we wanted to take it because it, it's so layered and there's so many things we can do with it where we can apply 
interesting weave techniques, or we can apply interesting print techniques, or we can print on a really interesting ground with texture, like in one case, a grass cloth. And so her work was like a muse, actually. Um, and Lisa was he heaven to work with because she, she left, us, she trusted us, let's say, which I don't know, I never actually asked you how that <laughs> felt, but like, like, give us her babies and then let us do our thing. How was that? You obviously, obviously found a, a kindred spirit, right? I, I, I did. I think that, um, you know, I think from the beginning when Lori and I met in my studio, um, you know, anyone who I think knows and has met Lori knows that she is such a genuine and um, easy person to talk to. And she was really excited about the work, which, which made me excited about the, the possibilities. Um, and then, you know, when I did a little more research after the initial meeting and saw what Weitzner was capable of, I was even more excited. And so, you know, initially I was a little nervous. Like you said, these are my babies. Um, but, you know, like I said, once I saw what Weitzner and Lori and her team were capable of doing, and I, you know, I just, I was able to just with, with trust, you know, kind of turn over, turn over the work to Lori and her team. And I'm just really, really pleased at the way they interpreted everything. I think it came out really beautiful and went beyond my expectations. So really happy with everything. Just one little side note, Clint, which yeah. was really touching was when we did the photo shoot, it was the first time we had the pieces really big. And um, we asked Lisa to come by and look at them. I hope it's okay that I say this. Lisa. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I was crying. <laughs> I did. <laughs> really sweet. And then I was like, oh, thank God, because we want her to be pleased. And she had never seen, you know, big pieces before. So it, it was lovely. It was a whole lovely collaboration. And the artwork, um, as I'm showing you here, I mean, we, we did a lot of, di we, we played a lot with it. And it just gave us so much to work with. Well, one of the things I um, forgot to mention at the beginning was, for all of you who are joining us today, please feel free to use the Q&A button um, on your screens and leave us a question or a comment. And as we go along or at the end, we'll do our best to answer those. So um, please feel like this is interactive and we're happy to help answer any questions you have. So Lori, whenever you're doing a collection, whether it's one of your owns or a collaboration, um, from both a creative standpoint and, of course, a business standpoint, how do you define what, what makes a good collection? Mm. A lot of things. Um, <laughs> first of all, my, my client is my, very important and that's the interior designer. Right. And um, I need to make sure that I can produce something that's A, unique, but B, beautiful and um, relevant for them that it has all the things they need. And there are some things that are not as exciting, like, you know, um, durability and a break, you know, pricing and all those things that aren't very romantic, but then the romantic side are things that are just so beautifully compelling that they have to have it for their client. And then put it all together in a way that it's fresh and new and not like anything else on the market already. So we have to take all of that into account and we really try very hard to introduce collections that meet all of those requirements, but that are also still very viable and, and um, easy to use in a space. Um, so it's kind of like putting it all together. You know, there's no, um, it's a recipe. It's like cooking. Right. Um, I'd love for you to go back to one of the opening shots that sh shows your studio. Yeah, sorry you, about you. You have a beautiful studio um, near the Flat Iron, and Lisa, your studio is at home. How did this studio process um, <clears throat> evolve, and what was sort of the timeline from that initial meeting, and what was that back and forth like? So I'll just start, and then Lisa, you can tell us how you thought about it. But we do have the studio in Chelsea. It's um, it's I call it the White Box Sanctuary. I'm actually here today alone no my my team are at home working remotely it's, i thought it looked like a change of scenery compared to yesterday but <laughs> i know it was a change of scenery um you know with zoom these days we all are, all of us need to pay attention to to what's behind us and um i was so bored with 
<laughs> my backdrop from the last few days. Anyway, it's all white. We work with color and design and we do everything here. We paint, we draw. And um, what we did was that just shows sort of some sketches and how they relate to product. What, what, we, what we did was invite Lisa here and she came and she saw the space and understood our process. We thought that was really important before we started on anything and that she was game. Um, and then after that, she, we went through all of her artwork, beautiful artwork. It was very hard to decide. These are just some examples of our work, that work and our color boxes because we couldn't do a collection of everything we wanted. We had to really choose. That was probably the hardest part. So Lisa gave us a lot of things to work with and some things we never even showed her because we didn't like what the results were. And then there were other things that we knew had potential but needed more work. And then those that came back from the, our, our artisans or our mills, depending on who we were working with, right away, the first time we were just like, perfect. And those we would show Lisa right away. So she, I don't remember Lisa, how many times you came to the studio during the- I think it was either like two or three times. Um, and, you know, each time I felt like a kid in a candy store because there's just so much inspiration everywhere. And I know that some of the, um, the early kind of development samples that you showed me or just, you know, kind of blew my mind, um, the different fabrications and the different processes. And, you know, I was just, it was, it was, it was great for me as a creative person, you know, um, I'm always looking for inspiration and uh, definitely, you know, going to the studio and, and just even understanding more about the process of how the collection comes together was very inspiring for me. And I've kind of taken some things away from that and, and started thinking about how to incorporate some of those things into the work my new work. And I, I know you work with artisans around the world with your own collections and you place and with your new jewelry you know you place such a, a high value on craft and the the hand of the artisan. Yeah. How did those sources um, come into play with the creation of this collection? Was yeah I thank you very much for asking that. Um, yes not in every product we did with Lisa's designs, but certainly in some of them, we worked with a whole group of um, artisans to hand print screen on grass cloth that was handmade. And those came out just beautifully. That's called Olympia, that wall covering. It's in four colors and it's really, really beautiful. Then we work with Japanese artisans. So we're really working in many different places based on what the technique we want is. And in this case, we printed, it's called Hourglass and um, I'll show you pictures of it. We, we printed um, on this special technique that only Japanese can do on this warped ground paper so that, and with this metallic, I'll get to it because we had to replicate her use of gold leafing in a way that was really elegant as her work is and not like glitzy in your face. But we also wanted to have a clean vinyl in the collection because to be honest, we sell a lot of it. And we have a long, a long history with our um, manufacturer who does what I call clean vinyls. There's no off gassing, they're, they're better for the environment. And we did one called Light Ray because we wanted to make sure that her work could also be seen in hotels and restaurants where we sell a lot of product. That's the pattern for Light Ray and that flower, Olympia, and what I love again, just going back to that, what drew me to her work was the geometry. But the right. geometry, it, I don't know how to describe it. Clint, you're better, much better at words than, than I am. Like there's a certain nuance to her geometry that's beautiful. That's light ray. So that's done on a clean vinyl and we combined mylar with it. Mylar gives it a real metallic look, but then the print over it in the ground is totally matte. So you play with matte and shine there, which is very much part of what she does. That's just a detail shot of Olympia where that's the print that we worked with artisans on, where they hand cut screens and printed on grass cloth. The colors are really, really beautiful. And um, the pattern is, is, is just lovely. And this is the example of where Lisa came to the studio with her beautiful graphic work. And I'm holding the first sample from Japan of taking that hourglass shape and printing it on this textured ground that I wish we could show you guys in person, but, um, and then this metallic that kind of comes in and out. So we took her graphic style and then made it in a bit of a more nuanced. And then this one is 
I don't know, Lisa, I would like to know your favorite, but this is my favorite. This is called Dorado, and this is a, fo a foil print, which is a technique that's somewhat new, where you can print on um, a textile and get a real shine to it that looks like foil. It actually is foil. And we did that in a very dramatic color, as Lisa's art does, and then we did it in a very quiet color on a linen. They're both on linen. And then we, I might be talking too much now, but I'll get it all out and then you can. <laughs> it, is the textile, we weren't originally gonna do textile, we were gonna stick to more of the, the, paper, the um, wall covering, but we took Dorado, which we loved, we to made it totally miniature, and then we wove it into this beautiful double width sheer in linen and cotton and has a few other fibers in it. That's so beautiful. It's like the eclipse of the moon almost. And we are able, because it's double width, you use it for drapery, but we can also do bedding out of it. And it's so pretty because it, again, takes her shine, but it does it in a way, the yarn we use is not a shiny Lurex, it's a, a matte shine Lurex that we use. And that just gives you an example of, of how, it's a Lisa Hunt bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, can you share um, with our audience about um, the importance that ge geometrics play in your work? There's certainly a hallmark of um, a lot of what you do, and you know you draw upon a lot of references from architecture to different eras, such as Art Deco. What is what what draws you to that motif or those motifs? Um, I, you know, it's it's in, in terms of uh, the geometry, the geometric shapes. Um, it's just something that I, I feel kind of intuitively drawn to. Um, I, 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 I can appreciate a lot of different, um, you know, shapes and processes and all kinds of different types of art, um, art that's more uh, figurative. And, but for me, when I sit down to create, or even actually when I'm just uh, sketching or doodling from, from, I remember from when I was a kid, I was just always kind of drawing geometric shapes. So I think it's just something that uh, intuitively I'm drawn to. Um, and I like the simplicity. I like building uh, layers with simple shapes. And, you know, with, with repetition, which is a, a big part of the work that I do, I feel like repetition, um, repeat patterns are very meditative. And again, it feels like a very intuitive part of my process of creating is to, like I said, from the time I start just kind of thinking about, um, you know, ideas and playing around with things. And I do look at architecture a lot, um, especially when we were living in, in, in the city in, in Brooklyn and New York. And, you know, looking at the shapes of windows and how shadows are cast across the windows at different times of the day. And, you know, I, again, I'm just drawn to those um, instinctively, I think. And I start to just, you know, I think create a catalog in my mind of how those things play themselves out. And then when I go to sit down and start sketching, you know, that's where you start to see the repetition. And, and I, I think it is a, a meditative process for me when I'm creating, um, yeah. And what would, if you could hold on that, that um, the sheer, I really, I'm not sure if it's a sheer, but yep. what was it like seeing your work translated into something um, tactile like that? Had you ever had any of your um, pieces sort of um, reinterpreted into, textiles in this way before? Um, not in this way. I have, uh, you know, I think when I, when I first started uh, trying to figure out what the next career was going to be for myself, I explored a lot of different um, possibilities. And textiles are something that I am, you know, inspired by and have always been inspired by process and finish and all of that. So I had done some, uh, some screen printing of, of textiles in my studio, just as kind of like my own exploration. But to see the work woven like that, you know, as just a whole other dimension to, to the art. And I love it. You know, I have to say, I'm, like I said, I really, and I, I mean it sincerely, I just love every, every, everything in the, in the collection. Um, and not just the pieces that are based on my art, but the whole collection together and how it all hangs together. And, you know, I'm actually excited to use some of it in our, in the house that my husband and I just, just bought here in Maplewood. So it's exciting. I love it. And Lori touched on the, um, the metallics. And I know in my intro, I mentioned the 24 karat gold appears in your screen prints and other work. Why, what the allure with that material? 
Um, and was it important to get that um, conveyed in this collection? Um, I think, you know, when Lori and I first had our, had our first conversation in the studio, as we, I was showing her, you know, everything from finished pieces of, of art to my little, you know, sketches or just ideas or things that I was pulling together, gold figures very prominently um, in my work. Gold specifically, not so much other metallics um, at this time. So, um, you know, we talked, you know, initially like how, how the work could be interpreted. Um, but I think at the end of the conversation, we both agreed that, you know, the, the at least a metallic quality had to be included in, in how she and her team were gonna interpret the art. Right. Um, and, you know, I, like, like I think Lori said earlier, you know, sometimes gold can, can overwhelm and be very, um, you know, shiny. And, and I think the subtleties that even I try to play with, with using the gold leaf are something that were translated into the collection um, that, that Lori and her team created. So, um, Lori, how did you, did you have thoughts on the metallic initially or? Well, you know, you always, it's so interesting because our country is vast and there are certain territories that love metallic, love golds, love silvers, love all the metallics. And then there are other territories that don't want it at all. So again, back to like one of your first questions, Clint, like how to create a collection that we can kind of have something for everybody. So we have some that are a little bit more emphasizing the shine and the glitz, but still doing it in a sophisticated way. And then we have others where it's just almost like a reflection. Mm. And um, help, it, what helps is when you are working with dimension or playing with different techniques. Um, and that's what textile design actually teaches you is it's not just about taking a pattern and translating it into the paper or the cloth, it's thinking more dimensionally about it and how you can really bring it, I, I like to compare it to piano playing where there's a note, one note, and then there's the chord. And what we try and do is make every piece that we bring to market a chord. Very cool. Um, you had mentioned earlier about how much your own work is inspired by nature and the natural world, and this sort of feels a niche that really isn't represented in your line. But I know even with the fabrics and wall covers that you've designed that are inspired by nature, you still love this idea of juxtaposition and contrast. And this seems to sort of marry a lot of those ideas. Maybe I'm overstretching a little bit, but. Um, no, it's the polar, it's playing with the unexpected. It's, it's like mixing a mat and shine. It's like the opposites attract. And if you do them in the right way, in a way you would never expect to put together. And maybe to the interior designers out there, they do this all the time with their interiors. Um, I'm not an interior designer, so I don't know how it works. I just know it does work when you, you know, mix something really old in a really modern space and it suddenly just, everything comes to life. Sort of on a mini level, we try and juxtapose in our, in our materials. I'm asking a, a question that nobody can answer, but I'll ask it anyway. Do you have a favorite um, in the collection or any here in the presentation that really um, speak to you more than maybe others or have a special meaning? Lisa? I really like, um, I think I, I, I love the hourglass and I like, oh, isn't it Olympia? And I'm sorry, I'm thinking of, it's, it's based on the pomegranate. <laughs> print that I created. Oh, yeah. Um, there it is. Yeah, I love it. And, and it, the photograph does not do it justice. I hope everybody orders samples because it's really beautiful. It's one of my favorites. So it's, it's on that, that great grass cloth. And then um, there is a subtle sheen to it. And the, the, the pattern itself is, is a pattern that I, I, when I created it, I was really happy with it. And it's something that I want to continue to, to use in my work and kind of you know, have different inter interpretations of it, but I really love it. And I love, I don't, again, I'm, I don't know the colorway, Lori, but it's the one that is, it's a bit of a mauve and I don't know what that, that's my favorite. That's oh, my favorite. Uh, that's interesting. It's, um, <laughs> hello, you know, that, it's this one, right? Yes, yes. It's so pretty. I love it, I love it. We really, um, that's another whole thing, Clint, is color. We had to make sure, like we kind of worked on color somewhat independently and then had to show Lisa and hope that she liked it. Right. So um, 
because the colors are somewhat different. Like, I mean, this, the green and the, I'm not sure they're colors you would use, Lisa. At least your colors are much more neutral. Um, but yeah. yeah, my, my palette is, is pretty, pretty restricted, but now I'm starting to, you know, play with more color. And, um, so I think the, the, the collection, um, is, is inspiring me to, to think of different colorways now too. And all the ones we're seeing on the left are all of those on a uh, grass cloth ground. They or are, they are, there are four colorways of this one called Olympia. And then we have two grass cloths that are just plain to go. So you could, I don't oh. know. I, I know on zoom, it's terrible to show these things, but basically <laughs> you could do one accent wall with the Olympia pattern. And then the, the basic, the ground is, as the rest if you didn't want the whole room that way um so that that one is is really textural and lisa's absolutely right the photography doesn't do it justice um my favorite is dorado which is this one um for those of you who it's this one. Oh, cool oh yeah and i love it especially in this really nuanced neutral colorway I love it because it's total geometry, but it's totally organic brush strokes at the same time. And um, the repeated pattern in it is so beautiful. It's repeated, but it's not repeated. It's really, um, I think my favorite. And that's why I think we, want, we felt we needed to do a textile for it as well to honor it. So, but you know, it's like your children. How do you pick? <laughs> I know, I said I was asking the impossible <laughs> question. So thank you for indulging me on that. Um, so but just one thing I just have to say about Paris when we were there launching this collection, George had mentioned it. We um, rented an apartment where we were going to, it seems like a million years ago, he's right, but we rented an apartment yes. and um, it was really beautiful. And we were going to have everybody there to, to present. It was um, the Black Artists and Designer Guild celebrating them and also the new collection launch. And there are so many of the American interior designers and editors that go to Paris and I hope it happens again. And there was a beautiful piano in the apartment. And somehow, miraculously, through I don't even want to tell you how long, we, we found this adorable guy to come and play piano for us during this launch. And he played this piece that was so beautiful that we had him play it. It was a four minute piece as a prelude before we presented the collection because it in a musical way summed up what the collection felt and looked like. And I know that sounds a little bit abstract, but it was so perfect. And we had, and I won't mention names, people there who are never off their cell phone <laughs> or Instagram, silent, just listening to the music. So there is a component to this collection that's audio, audio. And maybe it's about the repeat, but the movement within the repeats. I, I can't tell you why, but it, it's there. I just wanted to, that's very cool. some of your listeners have been there. There were a lot of designers from Connecticut there actually. Exactly. Um, it sounds like it was serendipitous. It was meant to be. Absolutely. So in the last few months, what have each of you been working on in this sort of new era, Lisa, from your home studio? And Lori, I don't know if you've been going into the studio or sort of been hanging out at home. Has it hampered your create creativity process or have you been able to kind of explore new things? Um, I'll go first, Lori. Um, I have, uh, well, like, like, like you said, my husband and I, um, we, uh, we're, we're still in the process of building our at-home studios. Um, so that process has, you know, kind of slowed down my actual making of the art. So I've been doing a lot of exploration, um, color and different techniques. Most of my work to date is all been screen printed, um, either on paper or canvas. Um, so, you know, with, with not being able to work the way that I would normally in, in, a, in our studio that's finished, um, I just picked up some colored pencils and some gouache recently and just started, you know, just very freely making marks and trying to discover new ways of, of uh, exploring some of the things in my work. And so that's been really great. Um, you know, it's, 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 there's days when it's really hard, harder than others. Um, but you know, with with the time that I have, uh, I've been trying to refocus and and stay inspired. And I, I'm working on a couple of commissions, which I'm grateful to have, especially during this time. So um, excited about those! And yeah, that's it for me, Lori. 
I um, go back and forth. I'm in New York City. I live in Chelsea. So I go back and forth walking to the studio and home and then bike rides. That's basically all we do, um, wearing our masks. And I feel very creative. I do have off days, I'll admit, where I, it's hard to get out of bed. And then I'll get up the next day and feel so inspired and creative. Tragedy like this, I think, breeds innovation. Um, and so I'm busy in the studio working on new products, new projects, new ideas, and organizing a lot, my color boxes and things. And I play music, and I feel good here. Um, I will say, I think it's a great opportunity right now for interior designers. I know that might sound strange, but I think that when this is past, more and more people will realize and will be working remotely, which means their homes and home offices need to be really great. And um, I love DIY, but I just, I, that's not going to do it. <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah. I mean, I'd love to get, see the interior designers somehow make themselves more accessible to more people because we need them more than ever um, because we're spending so much time at home. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So it's okay. It's okay. okay. Um, any final remarks before we open it up to questions? We don't have any questions at the moment, but we have um, several comments. No question, just want to comment on how gorgeous the collection is. Such a fantastic collaboration. Lisa, your work is so beautiful and inspired. Um, so people are, are very receptive to it. So awesome. anything else in closing before we open it up to questions? No, nothing from me. I don't think so. I just hope that everybody out there stays, stay, stays healthy and safe, but also creative and know that there is a future for all of us here and, and that we just need more, more good design. That's never going to go away. Absolutely. And I also want to let everyone know that um, you can follow Lisa on Instagram at Creative Hunt or go to her website, lisahuntcreative.com. And Lori can be found at lauriweitzner.com, weitznerlimited.com, and on Instagram at lauriweitzner. Um, does anyone have any questions? Anyone? Anyone? Is there a question now? One raised her virtual hand. Let's see. It's so strange when it's on, it's Zoom. It's, it's, you want to be able to see the people and. <laughs> are, are the, are the Lisa, are the, are the wallpapers and fabric memos available at Wakefield? I don't have the answer for that. Do either of you know? Um, I believe they can be purchased through Wakefield. Um, I don't know if the samples are there or not. Um, George can answer on that, I think. Okay. And come back to us, I think. Um, and George is going to join us for final remarks in just a moment. He, he can. Answer uh, to that. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, does anyone, George will have to answer this too. Who is the rep in the Boston area or online? Well, you can go to um, whitesnerlimited.com, which is our website. And, um, and they list all of, our, all of the reps in, Boston, in the area. But we do have our rep from Boston who's lovely named Rita. And, it, she's her contact info is listed on our website, so it should be very easy to access. And if for some reason it's not, you can always email me at info at lauriweitzner.com. So it's pretty easy. We're we're everywhere. Um, that we, <laughs> we're everywhere that we we try we try and be, and we have lovely people helping. So um, yeah. Well, I just have to thank you both so much for taking time to do this. Um, it's been a lot of fun, and um, I wish you both continued success and health and happiness as we as the we get through this. Yeah, exactly. Thank, thank you. you, Clinton. Thank, thank you, and thank you, um, everyone, for the opportunity. This has been awesome. And George, I'm going to turn it back over to you for some um, closing remarks. Um, I don't know how to do it. You're on. You're on. <laughs> oh, I don't see. Oh, I'm. Do you see me? Yep. I see you. Oh, I don't see me. <laughs> so anyway, all right. So um, uh, thank oh, you. That was fast. Oh, there. That was Laura, fascinating. You have, Laura, you may have to turn your screen sharing off. Does that? Oh, make it right. Easier? That's the problem. Sorry, we, everybody. We, ah. We, ah, there you are. <laughs> I I just want to say thank you both, and thank everybody for tuning in. I've seen the product in person. It is absolutely breathtaking. I mean, oh, wow. breathtaking. And the art that inspires part of it is amazing. 
and the collection is amazing. And um, there was a question. No, um, we don't have samples here in the showroom. We rep probably a hundred different fabric and wallpaper lines, but we can order memos for anyone if they know what pattern they're interested um, in seeing. Um, I should have a glass of champagne, but it seems a little early in the day for that. So maybe at one of the others, but I would like to give you a virtual toast and uh, thank everybody so much for making this possible. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, George. Hey, let's, hey, next year in Paris, all together. Absolutely. Yes. Right. Perfect. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, you, you should get the point. same space again. That was amazing. We, we agree. Are. Agree. Oh, I agree. You got it. Okay. Well, yeah. And we're going to get the same piano player. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Everyone's invited on the Zoom. <laughs> okay, good. And everybody should follow Wakefield on social media for updates on the next um, To the Trade Day um, lineup, the date and time, and the um, panelists. So thank you for joining us. Great. Thank you all. Thanks, Stay guys. safe. Stay safe.